Hallelujah. Yes, today, brothers and sisters, I'm going to speak from the subject entitled worship. Amen. Worship. We had an American preacher who came to minister to us a couple of weeks ago, I think two weeks ago, and he talked about worship in the second service. And this week I was grappling with which message to minister about. And in the midst of my prayer, the Spirit of the Lord com committed it, laid it on my spirit to come back and emphasize on this issue of worship. Amen? So I'm going to talk about worship and the, sub the subtopic under it is the heart of worship. Amen? The heart of worship. Those who were here in the second service, the day the man of God from America ministered, he spoke to us so much about worship, and he taught us how this woman, the Phoenician woman, approached Jesus, and because she was a Gentile, she could not receive her answer from Jesus when she came with that issue. But the Bible, she, he told us that when she prostrated down on the feet of Jesus, and she worshipped him. The Bible says that Jesus came and met her need. Amen. And also he gave us the example of the woman with the flow of blood. The Bible says that she crept into the crowd as Jesus was going on to Jairus' house to raise the sick daughter who had been sick for many years. And the Bible says she interjected Jesus' program because she came and laid down on the feet of Jesus and worshipped. Hallelujah. And when she worshipped, she moved the heart of our Lord Jesus Christ and compelled him to heal her of her infirmity. Amen. So he spoke so much about worship and today I'm just going to add a little bit of insight about what the Lord has revealed to me about this subject of worship. Amen. So, brothers and sisters, to define worship, worship has got two words in one word. Amen? From the word worship, we get the word worth. Hallelujah. And after the word worth, we put sheep. So, to combine together these two words, we get the word worship. Hallelujah. This means, brothers and sisters, that anybody you worship is a person who is worth. Hallelujah. You cannot worship somebody or something that is not worth. That's why from the word, of the, from the word worship, we derive the word worth. Because worship can only be given to something that is worth. Hallelujah. So from the word worship, the first word we get out of it, we get the term worth. Hallelujah. That's why on, only a worshiper can worship when he realizes that the person or the God that I worship is worth it. Hallelujah. You cannot worship something that is not worth. Hallelujah. Something that is worth means it carries the value. Something that is worth means is that it deserves your worship and your sacrifice. Hallelujah. And the reason as it why we worship God is because God is worth, worth, worthy of our worship. Hallelujah. We acknowledge that he's our creator. We acknowledge that he's our maker. We acknowledge that heaven and earth belongs to him. We acknowledge that the heaven is his throne and the earth is his footstool. We acknowledge that everything that has breath has to worship, to praise and give him glory because he's worth our worship. Hallelujah. So worship comes with worth. Hallelujah. And the magnitude of your worship depends on how much you value your God. Hallelujah. Show me how the weight of your God and I will show you your level of worship. 
Hallelujah. Be- show me how God is worth in your life. And I will see how God is worthy your worship. Hallelujah. Because the way you value your God determines your worship. Hallelujah. That's why I want to commend you today because though it rained heavily this morning, because you realize that my God is worth my worship, you kicked your blanket this morning. You came out of the comfort of your heater in your house and chose some of you came under rain. Some of you had to travel long distance. Some of you had to put petrol in your car to drive all the way in this place because you realize that my God is worth my worship. Hallelujah. And so brothers and sisters, worship is determined by how value you, by how much you value your God. Hallelujah. When you realize that God means everything to me. You will ascribe him the worship that is due to his name. Hallelujah. So worship is determined by the way you value God. That's why in the midst of the worship service, we can realize those who are truly sold out to God and those who are not. Because they are active worshipers and they are passive worshipers. Active worshippers give themselves the holy in the midst of worship because that's how they value God. Passive, passive worshippers can chew bubble gum in the midst of the worship. They can come in church and sit like spectators. They never participate because they don't carry so much value for their God. Hallelujah. So worship comes from a place of value. Hallelujah. Worship. Amen. I was in a court some years ago. I was blown away that when you go into court, the moment you see the judge coming in, everybody stands up. Hallelujah. Everybody stands up and nobody is allowed to sit down until the judge sits down. And when the judge sits down, it is a sign that now the court is in a procession. And you know what? The name they call the judge, they call him your worship. He's the greatest man in the court. He controls all the affairs of the court. I made a mistake when I was there. I called him sir. And they told me that is an assassination of character. You don't call the judge sir. It's called your worship. Hallelujah. You stand up when he comes in. Before he sits down, you cannot sit. Now that applies in the world system. What about in the kingdom of God? Hallelujah. God is the supreme judge of all. The Bible says that God has stood. Let everybody worship. Let the, all the world worship because he's the supreme judge of all. Hallelujah. He judges in heaven, he judges on earth, and he judges underneath. Hallelujah. Tell neighbor, God deserves your worship. Hallelujah. So if you go to court, you realize that the protocol that is followed in the court proceedings shows how mighty a judge is. Hallelujah. What about our eternal judge? Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, God deserves your worship. Let me tell you, brothers and sisters, how important worship is. Everything we are doing here, let it be prayer. Let it be fasting. Let it be the preaching of the word is going to end right here on earth. In heaven, there is no preacher that is going to preach. In heaven, there is no revelation of a prophecy. In heaven, there is nothing which preacher will ever stand on the greatest preacher, Jesus, to preach. Because Jesus preached to 5,000 without a microphone. Hallelujah. So in heaven, none of us preachers are going to preach. None of the prophets are going to prophesy. Hallelujah. All that is done here. 
But in heaven, what we are going to do is the worship day and night, giving glory to God. Hallelujah. And as we are here on earth, we are in a dress rehearsal, practicing what we shall do from eternity to eternity. That's how important worship is. Hallelujah. And yet, our times have casualized the worship. Hallelujah. That's why God is calling us back to the heart of worship. Tell neighbor, neighbor, God is calling you and me back to the heart of worship. The book of Matthew chapter 21, brothers and sisters, that we just read, reveals to us the steps of worship. Hallelujah. The steps of worship. The men of God from America explained to us the essence of worship. But now I want to take us through the steps of worship. Hallelujah. Matthew 21 shows us the steps during the triumphant entry of Jesus into Jerusalem. It reveals to us the steps of worship. The Bible says that Jesus sent two of his disciples to the next village. And he told them, go you will find a donkey with its colt. Lose him and bring him to me. And they went as he instructed them. And the Bible says when they brought the donkey to Jesus, the Bible says that immediately the people, after seeing the donkey, they set Jesus upon the donkey. Hallelujah. In other words, they set Jesus high on the donkey. Hallelujah. You can go back to that scripture. Hallelujah. They set Jesus on top of the donkey. Amen. And the Bible says, and a very great multitude spread their clothing on the road. Go to verse 7. They brought the donkey and the cord, and they laid their clothes on them and set him on them. Hallelujah. So the first step of worship, brothers and sisters, comes when you set Jesus as the priority in your life. Hallelujah. The first step of worship requires you and me to set Jesus as a priority. Hallelujah. He must be first. The donkey is brought and the Bible says they laid their clothing on, on the donkey and they set him on the donkey. That means that if you and me are to truly worship God must be at the center of our worship. Hallelujah. God has to be at the center of our worship. He must be the priority. He must be the main figure in the act of our worship. Hallelujah. Not your problem. Hallelujah. Not your sickness. Because the brothers and sisters, the enemy has fooled us too long that these days we worship at the altar of our situations. Hallelujah. We worship at the altar of our conditions. And you only worship God when things are right. When things are not right, you come to church moody. Hallelujah. But God has to be God in both your good and bad times. He deserves my worship. I will set him on high, whether I am down or whether I'm high, whether I'm going through tough times or I'm going through the best of moments, God must remain God. Tell neighbor, God must remain God. They set him on high. Hallelujah. See, brothers and sisters, our worship has been tainted by materialism. Today we worship money more than we worship God. That's why somebody can ask to go to work on Sunday to get more money than coming to worship God. The worship of mammon, the worship of money is dominating the last day's church. We have substituted God with money. And God said to Jeremiah that these people have set idols in their hearts. 
God said to Jeremiah, I'm going to judge the house of Israel because they have set idols in their hearts. Every time something else is glorified in your life more than God, it becomes an idol. Hallelujah. Let it be money, let it be your wife or your husband or your job, it becomes an idol. And God is a jealousy God. He says you will not worship any other God besides me. So we will come down and kill whatever is taking his place in your life because you want to remain a God. Hallelujah. So worship begins when you set God as the focal point of your life. He must be the priority. He must be first in your life. In all seasons, God must be first. Tell your neighbor, is God first in your life? Yes, verses 8. Go down to verses 8. Then I'll go to the second step because of time. And a very great multitude spread their clothes on the road. Others cut down branches from the trees and spread them on the road. Hallelujah. In order to worship God, you must lay down your garments. Hallelujah. True worship comes when you go over yourself. The Bible says they spread down their garments. Brothers and sisters, these people came well dressed. Hallelujah. They came to meet Jesus in their beautiful apparels. But when they saw the king coming, the Bible says they laid down their garments. Brothers and sisters, the true worship comes when you get to over yourself. You lay yourself down. You lay your, down, your garments down and take him as he is in your life. Hallelujah. Because brothers and sisters, we have different people in the church. We have managers. We have CEOs. We have professors. We have people with different titles. When I talk about laying down your garment, I talk about laying down your titles. In order to worship God, brothers and sisters, in spirit and truth, you must lay down your garments. Say, oh Lord, I lay down my garments to worship you today. Laying down of the garments means that I strip myself of everything. I might be a father in my house, but when I come in the presence of the Lord, I am a child. I may be a CEO in my company, but when I come in the presence of God, I am a nobody before God. I stripe myself, let down your garment, and worship God. Hallelujah. You cannot worship until you let down your garments. You cannot worship God and consider your own image. Because your own image vanishes in the presence of God. That's why when you worship, sometimes you get to a place where you mess your makeup. When you are concerned about your makeup, you cannot worship. When you are concerned about your suit, you cannot worship God fully. You must lay down your garment. Hallelujah. I lay down my garment. At work, I am a CEO, but in the presence of the Lord, I am a child. I may be a father. I will not consider what my children will say because this is the way I show my children that God is the center of my life. And that's why God loved David and called him a man after God's heart because David was a worshiper. Hallelujah. In the presence of the Lord, he laid down his garment that his only wife mocked him. And say you are a disgrace to the entire Israel. How can you strip yourself like this? Your entire king. And David says I must lay down my garment. I may be a king in Israel. But he's my king. Hallelujah. I may be a father. But he's my father. I may be a CEO in my company. But he's the absolute sovereign boss of the universe. To worship brothers and sisters, we must learn it to lay down our garments. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, lay down your garments. The reason as to why we have not been able to worship God fully is because we have not gone over our own souls. Hallelujah. Laying down your garments. Hallelujah. 
God wants you to come the way you are. Strip yourself of the titles. Strip yourself of your achievements. When you come before God, God is looking for you. Tell your neighbor, God is looking for you. God is looking for the real you. God is looking for the broken you. God is looking for the weaker you. God is looking for the vulnerable you. To worship, you must become vulnerable. Hallelujah. Let down your garments. You cannot worship and at the same time think about what is your neighbor will say about you. Hallelujah. You have not laid yet your garment down. Amen. Another thing worship does, worship involves the sacrifice. Because there is no worship without sacrifice. Listen to what the scripture says. And a very great multitude spread their clothes on the road. Others cut down trees. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, others cut down trees. This is a sacrifice. Hallelujah. The Bible says you must cut something in order to worship. They cut down branches from the trees and spread them on the road. Hallelujah. Because worship involves sacrifice. Sacrifice is not, worship is not complete without a sacrifice. Hallelujah. That's why today you had to sacrifice in the middle of the road, of the rain, in the midst of the cold. It was a sacrifice to come in the presence of God because every worship involves a sacrifice. Hallelujah. Worship requires sacrifice. They cut down branches from the trees. What are you willing to cut down in worship of your God? Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, that's why when we come in the presence of the Lord, our, we, if you have money, come with your best sacrifice to offer unto God because worship is not complete without a sacrifice. Hallelujah. Worship cannot be completed without a sacrifice. They cut down the trees. Hallelujah. And they laid down them down on the road in adoration of the king. Amen. What are you willing to sacrifice for the sake of the worship towards your God? Hallelujah. Sacrifice is very, very important. God requires our sacrifice in worship. Hallelujah. God requires you to sacrifice your best in worship to our God. How come somebody told me that when we are going to pick and pay to buy our groceries, you go with the good money. When you go to macro, to buy your own groceries, you go with the good money. You never go with the 10 rand because you know how much it will cost you to take the groceries you need. But when we come to the house of the Lord, we come with anything. Hallelujah. It is only in church that people come with anything. When they are going to buy groceries, they go loaded. Hallelujah. But in the church, the act of worship is diminishing. And yet all through the Old Testament to the New Testament, everybody that went in the presence of God to worship, they came with a sacrifice. Hallelujah. Because it is your sacrifice, once it burns on the altar, the Bible says that God begins to smell a sweet smelling aroma in his nostrils and he comes down to send his blessing over your life. Hallelujah. Are you, if you are not a tither, you have not yet come to a place of true worship. Hallelujah. Because your worship is expressed through your giving. When you love, brothers and sisters, there is no love without giving. Hallelujah. There is no love without giving. Ladies, if a man claims to love you and he cannot give, is a liar. Because when you love, you will give. Hallelujah. When you love brothers and sisters, you will inconvenience yourself. 
When I was in love, I used even to borrow when she asked me. Hallelujah. I used to run to spa by force. Give me whatever you have, she has asked. Because love will inconvenience you. Hallelujah. When you love somebody, you will go an extra mile. You look ar around ways and means to please her. Hallelujah. That's why God also requires a sacrifice from us. If you love me, sacrifice. Hallelujah. There is no love without sacrifice. There is no worship without sacrifice. Worship requires you to sacrifice. Hallelujah. Through your money, brothers and sisters, God can know how much you value him. Amen. If you, want, if you never eat tithe, you are a worshiper. Because you know, whether I don't have electricity in my house, or my rent is short, I'll begin with God first. And when you do that, God will by all means make a way where there seems to be no way. Because he has seen the heart of, a sacrif of sacrifice from the true worshiper. Hallelujah. The time of offering will reveal your true worship. What do you give during offering? Especially offering which is optional. Where you can give anything. Hallelujah. That determines how much you value your God. Because brothers and sisters, worship demands sacrifice. Hallelujah. What are you willing to sacrifice for the sake of your God? Hallelujah. Worship will require sacrifice. Until we learn the principle of sacrifice, we cannot grow to a level of the true worshipers that God is seeking for. Amen. So sacrifice is very important in worship. Amen. Uh, another point that you need to highlight in worship, physical expression of your worship is very important. Physical expression. Go down into verses 9. Physical expression. There must be physical expression in worship. Hallelujah. Then the multitudes who went before and those who followed cried out saying, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Don't tell me you are worshipping with your lips glued together. That's not worship. No, that's not worship. Worship requires you expressing yourself. The Bible says when the king was passing, they shouted, Hosanna! Somebody shout, Hosanna! Hallelujah. Worship requires you to do something. Hallelujah. The Bible says they shouted. Physical expression is important in worship. Sometimes I see in the time of worship, some people just standing still like this. Hallelujah. Sometimes I see in the time of worship, you see somebody looking around at other people. Okay, I would have thought that maybe you don't know the song, but now projectors are showing words. You mean you cannot even sing what is written on the projectors? You have not be yet become, a, you have not yet gradu graduated to a level of worship that God desires. Worship requires expression. Express yourself in worship. Hallelujah. They said, Hosanna. That is what we lack in the church. Few people can say, Hosanna. Hosanna with your tears falling down your cheeks. Hosanna to the highest. The Bible, said, the Bible says, they shouted. What did they shout? Hosanna. Say, Hosanna. Hallelujah. If you really want to worship God, you must start to open your mouth. You must begin to express your worship to God. Hallelujah. Every man desires to hear that their wife loves them. Every wife wants to hear that their man loves them. Actually, any relationship starts with expression. 
if you love me, say it. Hallelujah. You cannot be a secret lover. Hallelujah. If you love me, do what? Say it. Hallelujah. You know, somebody told me they took that girl from me. I had a secret crush on her. I said, you had a secret crush, but you didn't express. So don't cry that she's taken. Because love has to be what? Expressed. Hallelujah. Worship requires you, your expression. RPC, let us be the first church to become true worshipers in the presence of God. In the time of worship, express your worship to God. Express, open your mouth and worship. Open your mouth and sing. Tell him how good he is to you. Tell him the things that has escaped to you. Tell him about the battles that has fought for you. Tell him about the breath of life he has given you. Worship requires you expressing yourself. If you love him, say it. Hallelujah. And brothers and sisters, expression requires lifting your hands. Because lifting your hands means that, Lord, you are above everything. I surrender to you. I give everything to you. There is no other God like you. You alone are God. All these are expressions of worship. Hallelujah. When you lift your hands, you tell him, Lord, my dependence is on you. Hallelujah. I rely on you. That is a true worship. You must, we must learn our PC to express ourselves in worship. That's where your whites beat us. When you see their videos, they have their hands lifted. They open their mouth and worship. Because brothers and sisters, they know that worship is the most important thing in the church. Hallelujah. Because by worship, I give to God. Through the word, God is giving it to me. So the only way I reciprocate, I give him my worship, and then he sends me his word and heals me. Hallelujah. So God works with the reciprocity. You give him your worship. That's why worship precedes the word. Before the word comes, we go to worship. Because when the praises goes up, the glory does what? Comes down. So we must learn to express ourselves in worship. Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, there is a difference between praise and worship. Hallelujah. Praise magnifies the Lord for what he has done. Hallelujah. Praise glorifies the Lord for the life he has given you, for the new car you bought, for the new house, for the promotion at work, for the financial breakthrough. That is a praise. Praise glorifies God for what he has done. Worship glorifies God for who he is. That is the difference between praise and worship. Praise is all about what he has done in your life. That's why the Bible says, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. So everything can praise the Lord. Even pagans can praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Birds can sing praises to the Lord. But worship, brothers and sisters, glorifies God for who he is. Hallelujah. So when it comes to a worshiper, no situation can move them. Because it's not about what God has given me. If God never gives me a car, is it still worthy? Heal me or not, you are still my healer. Bless me or not, you are still my source of blessing. Hallelujah. That is worship. Worship glorifies God for who he is. Hallelujah. That's why, brothers and sisters, John chapter 4, verse 23 says that God seeks for true worshipers. The people will worship him in spirit and truth. Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, when you pray, you are seeking God. Hallelujah. But when you are worship, when you worship God in spirit and truth, God begins to look for you. Hallelujah. When you worship, God starts looking for you. Are there worshipers in the house? 
are there worshippers in the house? I came to tell all worshippers, God is looking for you. Hallelujah. I came to speak to true worshippers. It doesn't matter what you are going through. When you lift up your hands and begin to worship him, God will begin to come down looking for a worshipper. God will look for your voice. God will look for your address. God will look for where you are because God is seeking. Tell your neighbor, God is on a search. God is not searching for prayer warriors. God is not searching for people who are so deep. God is seeking for worshipers. Hallelujah. Worship him in your bedroom. Worship him in your living room. You can worship him in the prison room. You can worship him in the locker room. You can worship him in the boardroom. God is seeking for true worshipers. Hallelujah. God is looking for worshipers. And if you are a worshiper, God is looking for you. Hallelujah. And the reason as to why the enemy is fighting you, he wants to mute your worship. Hallelujah. Because devil knows that God can do all things. But one thing God cannot do, he cannot worship himself. So, devil, the reason as to why he tried to compete with God in heaven and he ended up being thrown on earth is because he tried to take the worship which belongs to God. And that is the reason as to why in Matthew 4, one of the temptations he gives to Jesus, he said that I'll give you all the kingdoms of the earth if you bow down to me and worship. Because he knows that it is only in one area where God cannot where God is unable, that is to worship himself. Hallelujah. That's why God said, I'm looking for worshipers. I see many people praying. I see many people praising. I see many people seeking me. But I'm seeking for a worshiper who will worship me with a broken heart. Who will worship me with a dysfunctional marriage? Who will worship me with the financial difficulties? Who will worship me with the circumstances around them? God is looking for worshipers. Hallelujah. God is looking for worshipers. Hallelujah. Who will say, Lord, you are still worthy? I might have lost everything, but you are still worthy. You are still God. Nothing can separate me from your love. Nothing can disconnect me from your faithfulness. God is looking for true worshipers. Hallelujah. They cried out. Hallelujah. And brothers and sisters, there is something about worship. Brothers and sisters, when you go in real worship, you cannot worship and worry. Worry dispels in the midst of worship. If you've ever really gone in the deeper realms of worship, you get to a place where no burden can ever be heavy on your shoulders. Because, brothers and sisters, true worship brings intimacy in the presence of God where problems, circumstances, and worry begins to dispel. Hallelujah. That is what worship does. Where you cannot worship and stress. You cannot worship and worry. Worship offloads you from the burdens of life. The reason as to why we are stressed out, the reason as to why we are depressed, the reason as to why we are seeking therapy is because we are not open to worship. When you open your heart to worship, anxiety will go. Hallelujah. Sleeplessness at night will disappear because worship will overload you of the troubles of life. Somebody shout to worship. Hallelujah. So worship is very important. Hallelujah. Worship is very important. And look what happened. After they had worshipped God right, after they had worshipped God in a right way, the Bible says now, now somebody say now, Jesus entered in the temple. Hallelujah. The Bible says, after receiving their worship, the Bible says he entered the temple and drove out the people we are doing business in the temple and overturned the tables of money changers. And I asked myself, oh God, why did you do this? And the Lord began to tell me that you are looking at the church 
But the temple is not the church. The temple is you. Get to be revealed to me that when you worship, I'll come and drive out every nonsense which the enemy has deposited in your life. When you worship, I'll come and drive the enemy who has occupied the territory in your life. When you worship in your house, I'll come and drive out darkness out of your house. Jesus entered the temple after they had worshipped. He found the temple in the mess. Like your marriage is in a mess. Like your business is in a mess. Like your finances in the mess. But after worship, because God is looking for worshippers, the Bible says Jesus walked. Hallelujah. True worshippers, I'm here to tell you, Jesus is about to walk into your temple. Jesus is about to step into your house. Jesus is about to step into your condition. I know it has been very hard, but as you worship the Lord, Jesus is about to come down in your situation, in your predicament, in the name of Jesus. He came down and he drove out the, 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 the people who are doing business. People who are making evil exchange. Some of us, our lives have been exchanged through evil. But worship is a weapon. To your neighbor, neighbor, my worship is my weapon. They just worshipped and Jesus came down and began to clean the temple. Hallelujah. And began to drive out every evil spirit. And began to overturn the tables of money changers after their worship. And down, the Bible says that they came to him with the blind and the lame and healed them all. Hallelujah. The reason we don't see much healing much deliverance, much breakthroughs, much miracles in the church, is worship has died. The presence of God rides on the wings of worship. Hallelujah. So without worship, God has no platform to intervene in people's lives. And every time the church, the worship in the church dies, the move of God dies. Because God rides on the wings of worship. So my worship is a weapon. When I worship, I give God a platform to step up on my behalf. So the Bible says he stepped in the temple. He cast out the works of the enemy. And then he started to perform healing. If revival shall embrace the wave of worship, which God is teaching in this church, brothers and sisters, we shall see cancers disappearing without anybody laying hands. We shall see HIV healing without anybody even laying hands on you. We shall see demons scream and going out because when you worship, God takes authority, takes the platform and do what only he can do in your life in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. So as I finish, brothers and sisters, God is calling us back to this place of worship where we can see the miraculous happen in our lives. God is calling us to this, back to this place of worship, my brothers and sisters, where worship is not something we do as a cliche, but something we take as our weapon. Hallelujah. That when I worship, God steps in my situation and turn things around in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. I know time is the first spent, but I want to call the worship team before Papa comes up to take us back to that song. If it had not been for the Lord. And let us worship him. Worship him broken. Worship him battered. Worship him in the beauty of his holiness. Worship him knowing that he's the highest king. Worship him knowing that when you worship, he will step into your situation and turn things around in the name of Jesus Christ. Because God is seeking for true worshipers. Hallelujah. And as Paul and Silas prayed and worshipped at midnight, the Bible says that God miraculously delivered them from their prison in Jesus' name. I want you to stand up on our feet. Let us prepare our hearts to worship as our Father comes over. If it had not been for the Lord, 
who was always on my side the enemy would have swallowed us would have drowned in the waters but our souls have found an escape a hiding place in you. Somebody lift your hands. The fellow's name is broken. I help is in the name of the Lord. Join me say, and I'm nothing without you. Without you, you are the air that I breathe. Can live without you. Come on. Without you, you are living, moving, and my being. I'm nothing without you. I'm nothing without. Nothing without you, without you, you are the air, you are the you are the air that I breathe. Can't live without you, without you. You can't live without you, without you. If you are living, move and have my being. Say Hosanna. Very powerful message, very powerful message, prophetic message, prophetic message, prophetic message. Worship God. Adore him, adore him. Say who he is. Say who he is. Worship him. The more you worship God, the more he will come down and the wipe, drive out. Whatever is not from God in your life, the more you worship Him, the more He will seek for you. The more you worship God, the more He will seek for you. He will look for you. God is seeking. 
God is looking for true worshippers. True worshippers. Is any worshipper here? Is any worshipper here? God is seeking for you. God is seeking for you. Is any worshipper here? 